What's good, YouTube? We back with another video with a new office setup, and we're gonna be going over this rotoscope teleport effect. Now, before we get started, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you hadn't already. Hit that notification bell so you know when I upload new content. Also, there's a link in the description down below. You're gonna need to download and install Reactor if you don't have it already. And once you have Reactor installed, you need to download the echo effect. You'll need that later on in the video. I came up with two different ways to recreate this effect. One of them requires the studio version, so if you wanna skip ahead, you can go to this time code. If you're on a free version of Resolve, stick with me. We're gonna hop straight into it. Select your clip, hold Alt and move up to make a copy. You can rotoscope it using either one of these methods. Now, despite whatever method you use to rotoscope your subject, you're gonna right click, go to render in place, and you're gonna select, I'm gonna unacode it, you're gonna select DNHR and type DN, DNHRQ. That's because this video is already color graded, it's a stock video clip. But if I was going to color grade it, I'd probably leave it at 10 bit or 12 bit. Now I'm going to select my two clips using keyboard shortcut Shift and F to create a new fusion clip. And then, and then I'm going to enter into fusion. Now my clip with the background was on the bottom, so it should be media one. But with the dual viewer open, I'm just going to select media one and hit one on the keyboard to double check. Then I'm going to hit F2 and name it background. Then my media two, click on it and hit one on the keyboard. And I know there's my subject. So I'm gonna hit F2 and name it sub. I'll move these around real quick. I'll take the output of my sub media node and connect it to the Mac control. Then I'm gonna select this merge one. Hit control and space. I'm gonna look for a clean plate. The output of the Mac control, I'm gonna right click on and then connect it to the clean plate. This little menu will come up and then I'm gonna select garbage mat. And that's gonna create an alpha on my subject. I didn't blur the edges when I did this because sometimes it can mess up the effect from my experience. Also, you can see this little hit piece here is missing. So what I'm gonna do is select the Mac control node, hit control space, and hit erode dilate. From here, I'm just gonna turn up the road, erode a little bit. It's gonna cover the little piece of the clip. It's gonna overshadow my actual masking, but that's all right for now. Now I'm selecting my clean plate clip. I'm going to inspect the tab and I'm gonna click fill. You also mess around with the road edges to kind of more or less fill it in a little bit, but basically this, you're kind of using this as a content awareness field. Another thing you can do as well is under this erode dilate, control and space, and you're gonna type in blur. And over in the special tab, just turn up the blur size. It's not perfect, but it's getting the job done more or less for it to be on the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So now I have the same two clips. I'm gonna disable my top clip and take the bottom clip into the color page. I'm gonna go into the magic mask and select the person mask. And then I'm just gonna draw a straight line through my subject, track back and forward. Now that I have my subject track, I'm going to the effects tab, go into search and type in object. Grab the object removal effect and just place it into your node. In the inspector tab, you can select mask overlay and it shows you that it's basically using the same selection, the same data from your magic mask. I'm gonna cut that back off. And then I'm gonna go to scene analysis. As you can see, it's already starting to take effect. So I'm gonna scroll down and click on build clean plate. It's utilizing the pixels to fill it in. It's not perfect. You can actually affect the look of this by going back to the Magic Mask tools. You can turn up the clean white. Also within the Spectre tab of the object removal, you can turn up the search range. One thing we're using the object remover method, it does depend really on your selection. I didn't do that great of selection, mainly because I'm recording this at the same time. It's a little bit more taxing on the computer. But if you're doing this like a client project or if I'm doing it for a project, I will go through and make a better selection. Now back on the edit page, once again, I'm gonna render this in place just to save on computing power. I'm gonna use the same settings and render. And so now back in Fusion with my original composition, I'm gonna drag the output of the subject node and connect it to the back end of the clean plate. It's gonna create a merge node. And kind of clean this up, I'm gonna hold Alt on the keyboard and grab the connecting line here and it's gonna create a joint elbow. This is basically taking our subject node, placing it back within the composition on the back end after this effect. Therefore you see, if you zoom in, you can still see the blur back there. This is what they call a pipe router. You can create one anytime you hold Alt on the keyboard and grab a joint within your node flow. So basically this is acting as the subject node. So with that selected, I'm gonna go to the toolbar and grab a transform node. If I move this around, you see my subject began to move. And of course you use the transform node to create the effect. So I double click to reset, I'm gonna zoom back out and I'm go to the first frame of my composition. I'm going to the Spectre tab and select center and size. You can select angle if you want to. You can also keyframe flip if you want to flip them around. I'll show you that in here in a second. Basically, I'm just going to let the clip play a little bit and get to about frame 12. And I'm just going to move them over here, turn down the size a little bit, make them a little bit, make them look like he's a little bit further in the distance. Then I'm going to cut down the Y axis, make them smaller, and it's going to create the keyframe as indicated by the little white mark. Then I go a little further, 
I'll move them over here. And I'll make them a little bit bigger. Move them up on the Y axis. And then I'm also flip them. So you just continue to move your subject around and it will create keyframes as you do so. Once you get to the end, you basically want to go through and right click and hit set to default. Right click, set to default. And if you use angle, you'll right click and set to default. Basically, you want to return back to the original spot. So now as I play it through, it looks very choppy and it looks very terrible. So we're going to go into the spline editor select transform one i'm gonna zoom to fit and it's gonna be all the keyframes and select this indicator here to select all then i'm going to right click go to ease and then select in cubic and go to the settings turn on your motion blur i'm just leaving it at 180 for now now i'm gonna select my transform node hit control space and i'm gonna look up echo now echo effect will automatically create a trail behind your subject we want to customize just a little bit so we'll go to apply mode and i'm gonna change this to screen it's gonna make the Affect more brighter. I'm also going down to blur size. I'm going to turn it all the way up. It's more or less going to fade out. It's more or less going to fade out the copies, give it more of a kind of a glowy light trail. If you want to have more effect on the trails itself, you can change the center axis. I'll put about, about right there and then turn down the alpha gain. Now, if you're using the studio version, of course, you won't have all these extra nodes. I'm just going to select these two here, hit control C. And then go back to the edit page. These are the two clips I use with the object removal tool. So I'm gonna select them, hit shift F, create a fusion clip. This is my background node. So I'm just gonna move these around. And I'm not gonna bother labeling. So I'm just gonna select the media two, hit control B, paste those two nodes. I'm gonna hold shift to add them to the actual node flow. Now looking at the end results of both effects, the differences are kind of subtle. Of course, you can still see the blur lines if you're using the free version. And with the studio version, with a better match, you can pretty much make it almost non-existent. Now, before I go, I want to give a shout out to everybody who downloaded the Retro Pack. If you could, leave some feedback in the comment section down below or hit me up on Instagram if you have any questions. And a special shout out to the name seen on screen now for the donation, for supporting the channel, and also to the channel members. Once again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff, and I'll see you in the next video.